basically making two films. So we write the script, then we do the casting, we shoot the actual film, and then we lock it, just like you would a normal live action feature. And then we have to bring it into the animation process, and then there's a lengthy post-production process. In this case, it was 18 months, um, which originally we thought it would be about nine months, so it's twice as long as, as we thought it would take. I'm definitely shooting and composing with a view to what the animators are going to do to that, and also I'm giving them the colors that they use because they basically sample those colors. Yeah, I don't feel there are any limitations really to what we can do in post. You know, we've created a whole another world almost all together. The general style, I guess, gets mandated from Linklater himself. He wants kind of a, uh, a painterly version of reality. Each shot has a certain amount of detail. The, the close-ups have of course are the most detailed where you can really go in. The lighting's usually really great. You can pick out all the lines and the, the highlights and the, some of the tones within the face. And it's more like doing a portrait. And then from a mid shot, you're not really grasping all the fine details, but you're just trying to grab the essence of the character. We have your basic style guide, and that's what everyone is shooting for, trying to get close. But as, we, as the film progresses, you see things working that weren't working in the beginning what you should do with the hair, what you should do with the beard, what you should do with the eyes. It's a new form of motion capture where we're, we're stealing our actors' movements, motions, and performances and translating it through our own eye and flip of our pen. process as I learned last time it's so cumulative and so slow overall I mean hundreds of hours to do one minute of film we were thinking it was going to take about 350 man hours per minute um, and we ended up being pretty off on that it took a lot longer the good thing about the rotoscoping is that it really gives you a realistic sense of the people who are doing the acting their performances need to be captured because I think a lot of thought was was given to how they're reacting to one another and this sort of thing. And the performances are fantastic to begin with, so we want to capture that. There has been a lot of trying to figure out, trying to invent, you know, okay, what is it that makes Winona look like Winona, even though we can't, we don't have those elements in this shot. Um, and a lot of the new path stuff, uh, the extras came in. Keanu, you see him clean shaven, you see him with a haircut. He didn't have a haircut, he still had a beard shot of the movie 1296 uh, where the camera pans up from Keanu on the ground to this wide angle of the field. That's an insane shot. We did a, a jib shot from ground level to 30 feet in the air and once you get 30 feet in the air on a wide angle lens, usually everything just falls apart. In that instance, I did uh, raise the detail level on the camera, which is an artificial detail. Uh, standard animation would never even try that. And we're a little crazy for having tried that too. It will give the animation team more more information in there to, to draw upon. That's a keystone shot. People need to appreciate shot how tough that was. Yeah, 1,296 shots. <laughs> it's easy to shoot. Just put it on a crane, goes up, guys walk down the corn rows, you know, it's a nice day. Then we get into the animation part, and it's just like living hell. I think if any of us had, had 